hello 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 welcome to my youtube channel for those that don't know that is sarcasm that is all because i don't really have a channel so it's not very huge it's also an homage to tuba avalon she's a fashion blogger she's actually gotten fairly big now so when she says it it's not nearly as funny with somebody like me who this hopefully will be my first video that i actually keep up i've tried in the past to record some videos and uh it never really works <laughs> out. I take them down pretty quickly. But I realize what I realized realized is I comment a lot out there on not a lot, but I comment on a lot of videos between perfume and um luxury YouTubers. So I started with a started with perfume in the pandemic and then I graduated to a handbag addiction of sorts. So I watch both kinds of content on YouTube. But anyway I thought it would be good just to have uh, um, me commenting so when people see, or me actually posting so people know who I am and don't think I'm some weird creepy person who watches a lot of um, YouTube and comments a lot. So anyway, this is who I am. So Rich Mitch does a thing with a weekly fragrance rotation. He just goes through all the perfumes he's worn in a week. He does it every week religiously. Um, I thought it was a good platform. Like, he just, you know, he um, talks, and it's a, a platform, it's a platform against which to just have a discussion. Uh, and I thought that would be pretty good. <laughs> Way to start for me to talk. Uh, see, let's start. So, today is the 8th. Uh, April 8th, 2023, if I actually keep this up, that might be important someday to easily reference. Um, and so seven days ago was April 7th. It was April 7th. <laughs> no, no, seven days was April 2nd. Um, okay. So anyway, that was last Sunday. And my first perfume that I want to reference is Jasmine Surai's Jazz. Uh, as you can probably tell from the title of the company and the title of the perfume, this very much is a jasmine perfume. <laughs> Surprise! Isn't it a shocker? Whew! Um, yeah, so this is run by a lady. Uh, she's youngish. Dana Elmesri. She's up in Montreal, but she's a world figure of sorts. She was, uh, she trained in Gras, of course, the mecca of perfume training and but she's from she has roots in Lebanon I think and then Egypt maybe uh, so yeah she's a world world lady and she has a couple of perfumes that I absolutely love this one and then Fayoum which is a clay based one but this one because it's the one I actually wore this week um, so it's Jasmine of course but then she I probably should have uh, I probably should have looked up these uh, re for reference, the notes. I'm not a great person who can spout off notes as a general rule. I'm not one of those savants who can do that. Uh, but I but I vaguely remember, it's like an earthy thing. It's earthy, rooty, not rooty in the sense of virus, but just, you know, earth. Earth. Like, I don't know. I, I don't know how you make that accord, but it's it's a rooted, it's a rooted jasmine of some sort. Really nice. I mean, it's a true jasmine. When you think of like true jasmine, the kind that endolic, the kind that, which I find so fascinating that females can smell jasmine a lot of most females and think it's beautiful, whereas men send, um, tend to think it's very much fecal. So since I am a lady, or at least female, <laughs> uh, yeah, I I love the I love the endolic smell of jasmine. So yeah, so that was number one. Uh, next day, next day on Monday, it would have been Polaris Storm Perfume Ava. So this one is uh, probably the perfume with my biggest dent. Uh, uh, I'm kind of tilted, so you can't quite see it, but it definitely, trust me, it definitely has. Yeah, there, there you go. You can see that better definitely have a dent. Now I've bought some perfumes that on eBay and so some bottles I have are not my own dent but this one was full when I purchased it. <laughs> it was brand new. Uh, 
So this probably is my favorite perfume. Oh wow, what a, what a shocker. A perfume that I use the most has the biggest dent is my favorite. Ooh, who would have guessed? Uh, but yeah, I again with the jasmine, I really like white florals. I mean, lots of other notes too, but I really like white florals. And this is just such a beautiful thing. So it's, so it's, uh, ginger lily? Tiger lily? Some kind of lily with gardenia, tiara. Like, I think that's Tahitian gardenia is what tiara flower is. But it's also got like vanilla beans and ambergris, sandalwood, white sandalwood. Uh, I feel like the top notes are, there's more of a fruity, I would not say this is a fruity perfume by all, but it's, you know, got guava and, you know, some other tropical things. She, by the way, is, Rachel Binder is the perfumer and she's, this is all natural, all botanical. Um, she's, she's super interesting. I really, yeah, I really think she's cool in general, but her perfumes, I love even more, I think. Uh, yeah, so, um, I'm sure in the future you will see this and I can talk some more later, but yeah, white floral, sweet white floral, you know, vanilla, white floral, ambergris. I'm just repeating myself again, but yeah, the stuff, like I said, my favorite perfume, I'm pretty sure. Just saying a lot because people, I developed a serious addiction during the pandemic. I have a lot of bottles. I don't know. I literally don't know how many I have. Uh, 500 bottles, maybe. It's bad. It's, it's kind of bad. Uh, anyway, but for, for me to, for me to say it's my favorite, that's a thing. Okay, so next one. Uh, another one, which I was surprised that I, it, it's Frasai Blondine. So this was a blind buy. A lot of my stuff was a blind buy. I live in Alaska. We don't have, uh, um, perfume counters unless I spend a lot of money on getting samples, which I finally realized I needed to do. But at the time that I was buying this, I was not really buying samples. I was just blind buying and hoping that I knew people's tastes and thought that it would align. And thankfully, this one does align with my taste. This one's, so, you know, I just mentioned this one has some kind of white lily, tiger lily, ginger lily. I think they both have lily in them, but they're completely different, completely different. I would, if I had to say this was a gourmand and this is a floral, fruity floral, no, I would not say this is fruity at all. No, take that out. This is, it's more deep, it's more mm, luscious, but this would definitely, although I wouldn't categorize this as like a regular old gourmand. This one, what does this one have? This one has, um, well, duh, butter and salt. Those are, those are just accompanying notes. But the main thing here is that lily, I always remember it has castorium in it, which gives it its strong base. Now, castorium I think of as something that you use to make something leathery. I don't think of this as leathery. It just gives it more of a full round, full roundness of the butt base, but it's also got, what else does it have? Uh, coming from memory, it had like salt and butter and caramel and tonka bean, ashoka flower. I don't know what ashoka flower is or ashoka flower. One of those. It probably is in the realm of this lily category, if I had to guess. It probably has tonka beans, probably a musk in there. But anyway, yeah, it's, but it's definitely a rich, deep, um, yeah, but I was, sh like, I always think of this as, like, something I like in my head, I thought, but I don't reach for it much. But, like, again, the fact that I have a dent in it means I'm actually reaching for it. Uh, yeah, it's good. It's really good. And as you will see in the days, f uh, coming next, you will see that I really like this. Uh, so next, next day, next day would have been the fifth, that would have been a day. So up until recently this week, I've been kind of focusing in on just having one perfume a day. Cause there was a time when I was literally wearing three or four. I'd try something on in the morning, let it go, scrub it off if I have to, try again in the, you know, at midday, then in the evening, before I go to bed. But I've been getting away from that. But today is a day that I actually wore two. So I brought out some classics that I 
that I really like to have and they're this is like a look of all my favorites which is weird because yeah anyway this is kind of cool so this is a very old bottle of uh Lair blue from Guerlain and this is joy from Jean Patou I I while I have several old bottles of this I think this is one of my newer ones I think I got this right so LVMH bought whoever owned the Jean Patou bottles. Maybe it was even Jean Patou before that, but you know how things change ownerships every year, especially when it's an old company. Um, but they bought them in 2020, and I and I got this one towards the end of uh, the year. It was it was when I first was starting into uh, my perfume little addiction. Um, but yeah, what is Joy? Um, for those that don't know, this is another jasmine perfume. So I didn't really, so everybody's all, always said, talked about how, how the environment definitely, uh, will make you want to crave different perfumes. And I, like, living in Alaska, we don't get that hot usually. I mean, today, like, winter wanted to come back and it was snowing out there for hours and it's in the 20s again. Right? So I don't usually think of... Uh, seasons is dictating what you know what the calendar says is usually not going to dictate what my perfume selection is I'm one of the lucky ones who gets to wear a lot of the cold winter or cold weather perfumes longer throughout the year so but clearly I am doing a jasmine cake so this is jasmine on jasmine um, yeah so anyway jasmine this is another pretty um Realistic jasmine. This is, uh, this is like jasmine and rose. It's probably a must base. Again, I probably should look up the notes before I start this if I do this again next week. Um, but yeah, that's what I think of Joy. It's just jasmine and rose and some kind of musty something. Uh, yeah, it's one of my tried and trues. I wear this a lot. Um, yeah, so you'll be seeing this more. And again, so this is one of my vintage bottles of Lair Blue. Like I was saying, some bottles I have purchased used. This one definitely has. I haven't used this one much. So I have several bottles of Lair Blue. This is, again, another one of my favorites. This is one of my favorites. Maybe that's what triggered me to actually want to record this. But So I think this may... No, this isn't my oldest bottle of this. I have something I think might be from the 40s or 50s. I think this is from... The 60s. Now this is in what they called the rosebud um, bottles, and this is actually uh, a glass one. So I've got several of these. What do I have? I've got Roland and Louis, Mitsuko. Oh shoot! I've got a fourth one. What the hell do I have? I don't remember. But I have got four of these bottles. And the ones with the with the actual glass stoppers are older than the ones with the plastic ones because I do have one with a plastic cap. Um, and so this I think probably dates from the '60s. But yeah, this I mean, come on now, Guerlain Le Bleu, like this is Helio Heliotrope, and it's got this is one of the ones that true Guerlainade base, you know that virus, and vanilla base but heliotrope and violet and iris and carnation probably i like that i think ooh, i mean it's probably got a citrus top this one has you know you could see that it's very much darker with that vanilla you know with how old it is it probably has a little vanilla and it darkens over time and uh yeah this is just this is just really good. It's got more of the animalic characters, like the the most recent versions. Like it's been denuded, you know, as all really old perfumes have been to accom to uh, um, accommodate, you know, as tastes change. And fortunately, we're in an age that doesn't really like the the strong er kind of notes out there. So, but yeah, I uh, one of my, one of my favorites. Uh, so, yeah, so that was one day. So, the next day, um, ah, another two perfume day. So, liquid's back. <laughs> Blondine is back. <laughs> I had to wear it two days in a row because good stuff. 
and it's like it's it's a it's a so like I was saying before it's like it's got castorium in the base to it so it's got a deeper it's a gremlin I'm not so I probably consider myself a bit of a perfume snob although I'm not I'm again I, I can't pick out notes like some people can out there but I probably am a bit of a perfume snob and but I'm not one of those that says oh it's vanilla oh it's too juvenile for me. Mm -mm. I, I like my gourmands. I've got no problem with that. So, two days in a row. So that was the morning. And then the night. The night time. So this is, speaking of being, uh, speaking of being a snob. So this is a niche brand. Like, very niche. So, shout out to Chris with Making a Sting. I'm so sad that they don't make, him and Camille don't make any more videos. Because... They were literally my favorite YouTubers of all time. Um, but he's from New Jersey just like I am. I don't know if it's something in the water. He's much younger than me. I don't know. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 years younger than me. We're both from northern New Jersey. And his, like, his nose, I really gravitate. I totally vibe with what he likes as a general rule. Not everything, but mostly he likes. And when he posted about this in his Instagram, this this company, I had to go check out their stuff. This one is called Smuggler's Notch. And I, oh shoot, I can't remember how, I, I think I got a hold of some samples, maybe? Shoot, I can't remember, but this one I did blind buy. Another one I actually, shoot, I wish I could remember now. Because I'm pretty sure I own another bottle of theirs. But this one, so Smuggler's Notch, so uh, this is how uh, base I can be sometimes. Like, you know, some people say, oh, the bottles were influencing their decision to buy stuff. The name got me because, so Smuggler's Notch is a, is a, is a notion to, it's up in Vermont. It's like a ski resort area. And I used to go to Vermont a bunch. Uh, shoot, 2013, 14, 15 time frame. And I just remember I went up there, uh, just right. Usually I went to Montpelier and like the Northeast Kingdom a lot. I mean, uh, I lived in down in uh, like Brattleboro area 20 plus years ago for six months. Um, anyway, I'm getting ahead, so or I'm getting behind, maybe is the more accurate term. But this place, uh, I just went up there, you know, parked my car, it, it was, you know, the road was cut off because of snow, it was in the middle, not middle of winter, but towards the end of winter, and I just really, you know, took a long walk up the, up the long, uh, winding road, and, no, it was just, I, it was just really nice, so, in this one, it kind of pays homage to the whole maple syrup, uh, apples, uh, it's like a boozy... I'm gonna have to get back. I'm gonna have to wear this again <laughs> and remember. It just, <laughs> I, I I like his stuff. It's see, look at this on the back. So it's number five out of twenty five bottles. I need to do more research on this person because this and Jinx smells. I also uh, Chris recommended that one, and I I looked at them initially at first, but I always get them mixed up. So I'll look at them him again because, like I said, I need to wear it again because I like it. Uh, yeah, I'll get back to you, but. It's a, it's like a boozy apple, maple, something. Definitely has deer musk in it. <laughs> so deer musk has always been my nemesis. Like I've finally come around to actually liking it more, or not liking it more, but liking it. Period and appreciating it. If it's not over, usually, in the past when I first was exposed to like real deer musk, uh, it. Um, just a drop in the damn composition and it was it would destroy everything else and I'm finally learning to cut through that and and smell the other beautiful smells that support the deer musk but um, I think this is all, also all natural because I'm a big fan of all natural they, you wouldn't think it from the selection I've got this week because they're not predominantly all natural but I do like the all natural stuff love that one uh, and then Okay, oh, jeez, I'm so late for this because I'm such a rambly person. But, okay, next day, 4 or 7, which would have been yesterday. 
when I like something, I'm not afraid to wear it over and over again. Because, you know, why deprive yourself of something you're, you're into? There you go. Press side blondines for the next day. And so today, finally today. Uh, so, like I said, winter's back today. It started yesterday. It actually got a little bit cold yesterday. But what do I do? I'm a person, a contrary person. So I had to bring out spring. So, Bold and Wee by Guerlain. This is one of the bee bottles. Um, I got this again, I think, in 2020. And I consider this a really spring perfume. This can get quite bitter sometimes to my nose. But gal Galbanum. Gal gal I can never send it word for some reason. Galbanum. Gal yeah, it's not like Labanum. No, no, it's Galbanum. <laughs> anyway, it's green. <laughs> it's very much green. I believe Galbanum is is a resin. Oh my god, I don't even know that anymore. Oh, how embarrassing! I'm not stopping. I'm at 21 minutes. I'm not. I'm not repeating myself. Uh, yeah, Bolden Wee. It's got so it's got Narcissus, which is another white floral, and Galbanum, which is very green. There is probably so much more to this. It probably has some kind of iris in it, is my guess. It's freaking Guerlain, so. Powdery, that's what this is, like, this is a powder bomb. Yes, how did I forget that? But I think, I think of three things when I think of this one. I think of Galbanum, the green, bitter, the green, bitter green, the Narcissus, the, and the powder. Mmm, good stuff, good stuff. Good stuff. And then, so, again, another day that I'm wore two uh, perfumes. But, so this is my final one. So I mentioned Jinx Smells here a little while ago. So, and this is Rosa Rue. Rosa Rue? Rosa Rue? Rosa Rue? Yeah. This is basically a rose oud. I'm a fan of rose. I am a fan of oud. I am not a fan of rose oud. I don't know why it doesn't jive with me. I, I'm trying. I'm trying to figure out how to appreciate rose oud <laughs> fragrances. I mean, it's definitely got a pun. It's got more of a Hindi uh, kind of. Uh, let's see what oud they talk about. I'll just read off the notes since I have them here. Top, rosewood, bergamot, spices, heart, ansars, ansar, ansar. Oud. Royal Taif Rose, Rue Golob, which is another rose. Is that rose? I think it's rose. Um, some kind of a tar, I believe. Um, Turkish Rose, Moroccan Rose, Clementine, Blue Cypress. Okay, here we go. Here's the Oud. Indonesian Oud, Cambodian Oud, Tibetan Musk, Ansar Santal Royal, White Ambergris. It's an extra, extra at 32%. Uh, yeah, I somehow I thought there was more funky, like, Hindi oud in this. Because it's pretty animalic. Or, not, not necessarily animalic, I, uh, just funky. Uh, and Cambodian, because usually Cambodian oud is the more sweet stuff, like, but no, this is, this is Indonesian. Because the Indonesian is kind of in between. But in, interesting, I, I really would have thought this would be of a Hindi oud. And I love I think Hindi is my favorite of the oud, of the oud profiles out there. But again, I just I, I think I'm through I'm pretty sure this is a two mil sample and I'm kind of I've worn this several times. I'm gonna say four or five or six times. I'm not an over sprayer, guys. Uh I I'm thinking I might have to give up. I've tried. I failed. It's a good it, it, you know, you you can't win them all, people. All right, well, and that was today. That's what I'm wearing right now, which is on my, I mean, it's nice. It's ro like the, the, that more funky oud is, is kind of burned off. It's more rosy, but okay, come on, you get, let it go. Let it go. I just got to let it go. Got to let it go. I'll probably try again. So I don't have this thing floating about in my house because I'm trying, I want to get rid of some things, but I'm turning into a hoarder in this very tiny space. <laughs> anyway, okay, I've got to stop. I'm nearly at 25 minutes. This was fun. 
this was fun. Maybe I'll see you again. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll, maybe you won't even see this. Who knows? Anyway, bye guys. If I see you again, happy trails. To you until we meet again. <laughs>